This is the powerboat Here and Now, our very own entry in this year's powerboat race from Cowes to Torquay. In just a moment, we shall be going down to the start, and then in about an hour's time, we shall be off on the 166-mile course along the south coast. And we shall be going in an open boat in the open sea, driven by 200 horsepower. But if you think 200 horsepower is a big engine for a boat just 25 feet long, well, there are some boats taking part which have engines of more than 900 horsepower. The we I talk about, by the way, are Peter Twist, who's going to drive, and believe me, a pilot does take some driving. Yeah. Sid Bowles is going to navigate it, so I hope no. the shortest possible way. And myself, Jeremy James, is going to do nothing at all, except probably feel very unwell. gentle run down to the start at Cowes. It looks like being calm for the sprint round the island, but then we'll see. Ten hundred hours, we're off. The bigger boats fair streak away. The Italian Asperenziella has a good chance as long as she doesn't do what she did last year. She took a shortcut round a marker and was disqualified. Jackie S is doomed. She runs down a pleasure craft and has to give up, but not until she's rescued the crew of Lord Bingham's white migrant, which got off to a splendid start, but then broke up and sank in rough water off the needles. We're getting left behind, but perhaps the leaders are going so fast they'll burn up. At least the weather forecasts in our favour, a front drifting eastwards with force four to five winds. I'm not sure if I care about winning, I think I prefer it calm like this. But the trouble is our nice reliable diesel engines are slow. At least they're fairly economical. It costs Blue Moppy seven shillings a minute to run flat out, but it's only going to cost us seven pounds to cover the whole course. The Needles, our first real landmark, and it's still too calm for us to have much hope of catching anyone unless they explode or seize up. St Catherine's Point and our first taste of bucketing around. It doesn't last long and in the lee of the Isle of Wight, Peter Twist and I can have a word. Peter, what's our chance of winning? I think very remote indeed of uh, winning that right. What about uh, the cars? Well, I think we stand a, a possibility of winning the diesel award if we're a bit of luck, but there's some much more powerful diesel boats in the, which might be ahead of us. Anyway, let's uh, hope for the best. Peter, we've got these uh, 200 horsepower here, and there's these other boats taking part with a 900 horsepower engine. Is it in fact the case that the bigger the engine, the better your chance of winning? Uh, not necessarily, no. The bigger the boat, you stand a better chance in the rougher seas. Actually, it's not one 900, it's two 450 horsepower engines, I think. Yes. But uh, in, in general, if the sea is rough, then a, uh, a larger boat will tend to be better than the smaller ones. So really, the more you can spend on your boat, the better your chance of winning the prize? Yes, if you've got an unlimited amount of cash, then you, you certainly ought to be over the line first. What sort of conditions would you say would favour a, a smallish boat like this one? Uh, we, we really want a sort of 12 to 15 knot uh, wind, which gives us a bit of reasonable chop, uh, which would make it difficult for the smaller and flatter bottom boats, but not too big a sea, which favour the very big and uh, uh, longer boats. Past the needles for the second time, and the weather's changing. That front must be passing over. Perhaps we are going to have a touch of Peter's chop. At Branksom Chine, Tommy Sopwith is leading the field in his 800 horsepower twin engine Thunderstreak. He won this race two years ago, and he's not doing so badly at the moment this year. Second is Blue Moppy, powered by the same sort of engine, twin petrol driven Fords. Thirty-third. 
Peter Twist scowls and hopes that the wind really will freshen. It does. stretches of Carmish water until we get to Torquay. Time for a quick bite of bacon and egg pie and a warming tot of scotch. One very puzzling thing about this race so far is that our navigator, Sid Bowles, doesn't seem to have been doing very much. Sid, I always thought that navigators had charts and things around them. I just can't see one. How do you navigate in a race like this? Well, we will have a chart on board, of course, um, but we use a sort of card system yeah. whereby we've plotted beforehand each leg of the course with the um, compass bearings uh, from each boy, each mark on the course. So in fact you're staying from boy to boy? So we're staying from boy to boy, that, yes. Now how do yes. we manage on this long spell across the bay when there isn't a boy for about 50 miles? Well, we have the compass bearings all worked out from the drift of the tides and that, which should get us, we hope, with um, the time leg to the next boy on time. What's your biggest problem, in fact, as navigator? Well, the biggest problem of any navigator, actually, is the fog. So we keep our fingers crossed there isn't going to be any fog. Yes, very much crossed. It's not fog, but wind that becomes the problem. The fleet of escorting aircraft, including ours, disappears for the worst of it, and our camera boat has deserted us to leave us alone for the two and a half hour battering over Lime Bay. Torquay, the end of the race and still no more than a dream for us, while the winner, A. Sparenziella, sweeps up to the line all alone. Apparently, Thunderstreak broke down. Poppy isn't so far behind after a tremendous ding-dong with the third boat, Tramontana. But Blue Moppy needn't have worried. Tramontana, number one, was disqualified for missing a marker way back off the Isle of Wight. a wave at 20 knots is fun once but when it goes on and on and on for hour after hour it's rough tough going relax once and you get bruised forget to bend your legs as you bounce over a wave and the impact makes your teeth rattle one gets jealous of the bigger faster boats like mrs aitkin's ultraviolet streaking over the finish while we're still struggling and lurching through the rising seas and about the worst thing from our point of view was going straight past Torquay and then on for another half an hour's thumping and crashing to the Skerries boy. How we loathed the organisers for that extra imposition. In fact, we hated everything. The sea, the boat, each other, the lot. And then, suddenly, we were in calm water, and Scotch soothed tattered nerves, and one could almost relax. Which is probably why we went over the finishing line the wrong way, and gave a little private display of manoeuvrability to cross the finishing line in every conceivable direction, and avoid being disqualified.
Well, not dead slow. We have finished, which is more than a lot of people can say, even if we are only 19th overall and second in our class. Not for nothing is this called the toughest powerboat race in the world. It really is, and to finish, let alone win, is quite an achievement. Well, Peter, here we are in Torquay. What's your uh, quick verdict on the race? Well, I'm very happy that we've arrived in good time. Only we're a few minutes behind schedule, but uh, only, only about 15. And it's slightly rough towards the end, but the, the first part was very smooth and very sort of happy cruising around the island. We did have that little choppy spell coming across Lime Bay. How did that compare with the weather last year and the year before, for instance? Uh, well, a little bit choppier than last year, but uh, certainly a lot smoother than, than the year before. And what are you going to do now? Bar? I think bath and change, and then probably something to eat. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mark. All right. Well, for myself, I too am going to have a bath, and believe it or not, a very long, cold drink. I'm very glad to have been on the... Uh, powerboat race, but I don't really think I want to go again. Good night.